good people, good neighbors, still good neighbors, all good neighbors. Newfoundland, I guess they're a special breed. I went from the long liners to the draggers and the inshore fishery was sort of gone in rally as we see that sort of thing, you know. All the big draggers fish back and forth night and day at that. Yeah, I tried to get a load and go on, but he cleaned up everything was around. Twenty years ago, it was a booming town, you know. And one time, the schooners used to come in. This this was a real safe harbor here. The harbor was lined up with schooners. You could step from one schooner to it. After there was a storm, they all come into Rally Harbor, and because it was such a sheltered harbor for them. Rally was a nice place when I came here. Everybody was pretty friendly, and everyone was fishing. I came here as a servant girl with my husband's family. And I was there two years and I got married. 1850s, I think, it was when your first Europeans began to settle in this community. Farmer Tares were the first family that settled in Raleigh, and then there were Taylors, and then the Elliott family, we settled in this area. It was all little old-fashioned houses then, little tiny stuff, and but soon changed the houses. The women that day used to work. They'd be in the garden, down on the flake, washing clothes. The whole lot going through, and the women that do it. I don't know how they used to do it, but they used to do it. And then when they come in with fish, we had to go in the stage and put away the fish. Then when the time come to dry it, we had to go on the flakes, and spread it in the morning and make it up in the evening. We were whole week at it in the sunshine. Now, I, I have said to my mom one time, my mom made, I said, I hope we rain them all. Me too, she said. Yes. We had two denominations here. We have the Anglicans and the United people. We had an Anglican school and an Anglican church, and a United school and a United church. When I started out myself on a liver factory, eh? I was 11 years old. Well, we worked about to, well, from May up to probably October month. That year I made $90. He gave me $10 bonus. They all have a good fisherman, eh? <laughs> yes. But everybody shared, you know, like the fishermen, the local people, they all worked together. I always thought they did. And your part be weighed up when you get to St. John's, eh? If it was good, well, they give you something for it, and if it wouldn't, you get nothing. You have a stage, something like this one here. The split the stage, split stage yeah. outside, right, with a table, where four men would stand up, or a woman, or whoever your crew was, because lots of times the women would help eat yeah. with the cutting tropes. I used to put the fish on the table and then I would cut the fish's throats and I done everything except split them. I didn't split them. <laughs> it was like a in a factory at that time then, you just sliding over to your hitter, you just snip the head off and pass it to your two splitters. One of my grandfathers always keep a sound bone in the air, that's how fast he could split. The door used to be open or the little shoe, always one hit in the water. There's a lot of characters here in Raleigh though, you know. The older people. Eh? We had Ebenezer's, Penny's, hard old scuff. 
every household had big potato gardens, lots of potatoes. And my father always had cows and, and chickens and that, so never went hungry, that's for sure. Didn't have a lot of clothes to wear, but we had, never went hungry, so, you know. <laughs> My father, you know, when they fished, was nothing like the fishing they do now. All the coastline there was all called trap birds. All they ever fished for was codfish, and they had cod traps. They didn't have the means to go looking for the fish. The fish had to come in to them. And every year they'd have to set their cod traps along up around the Burnt Cape there and down around Arnie Head, Cove, and all them places. Everybody be after it the best birds. A bird is a section of water that you, as a fisherman, put your trap in. Every bird got to be 60 fathom from each other. Each fathom is six feet. And each bird got a name. Yeah, they had them all called different crows, nests, lance, gulls, brook, cash bird, white vein, cannonballs. So the bird just means that that's your property for that year. The Fisherman's Committee calls everyone together that's going to be fishing in the community for that summer. Everyone got to be there. When your name is called, you draw out your bird. There's some good birds. And there's some bad birds. There's good birds that's a long ways away from the community. There's birds that's close by the community. Everything had to be taken into consideration. The distance from your stage to the Burt meant good or bad for you. When you draw the cash, it meant exactly what it is, cash in your hand. You knew you were going to have a good season there. You draw a Burt in a black rock, that's four times further up the coast, and you've got rougher waters, you've got longer to steam, more oil to burn, more gas to burn, and if you've got a load up there, it takes you a long time to get down with it. People had a crowd with me, and they say five men mostly. With all the car, and if you had a couple of traps, you'd have five or six men. Most of the traps are 60 fat on the round, eh? And once you rise the fish out the bottom, once you start pulling on them, yeah. I mean, with the motor boats, you go across your trap, and then you pull it up, and you make the trap smaller and smaller, so when you get where you couldn't put your hand down through the fish, well, it was dried up, didn't have to dip, right? So you dipped in your boat's full and keep drying up more until it was all dried up. Either then, if you had more than your boats could hold, you could put it in a cod bay. And that was another nit that we used to take with us on the boat for when we get too much. It was hard work back then. Like they had no means of selling their fish fresh. Everything had to be salted and then dried. You know, and hopefully they always had good weather. They had to go to the merchants for all their supplies. And they'd only let you have so much, you know. There's some people at our times, some other people not so hard. But some of these merchants never cared. They looked after themselves quite well. That was the, the good old days, you know, when we were growing up, mm -hmm. you know. There's there no roads or nothing around then, you know. And, well, every, everybody was happy, that's one thing about it, you know. No small places. out there where it was nothing but trawlers and, and it was lights out the, the boat. Yeah, it? yeah. It was big bucks, big cooperations. That's who got all the money. Fishermen just made a no, day's he, pay out of it. Bizarre. You can't go out and take all the, the females of any species and get rid of them and expect for reward here. But that's what happened. I got involved with the union even at that time, and we got trying to get the 200 mile limit for the trawlers. You know, successful in doing so at that time. But after 92, everything came to a standstill, and uh, well, that's when we seen all the flux of our younger people moving. 
and now it's got in our community where you got older people that don't know the young people, you got the young people that don't respect the older people. The thing is, is no communications no more. No one knows their own people anymore because you got older people that just went away and stayed in their houses. There's no fishery. You can't go down the stage like, like today. You know, you walk down on the stage in the spring of the year, be nothing but the hustle and bustle of work. Everyone was so busy working, be nailing this or fixing the stage, or you get big crowds going pushing out boats. And the only way that I could see helping out this community was try and get everyone in the community to know each other again. We got no fish we live. No. Everyone has accepted basically in this harbour whatever sold out to government wishes that they did. The sad part about it is the ones that's living here. You know, if there's nothing, nothing, if there's no work, I don't know what they're going to do. Try to get the tour boat, because different people, they're from Denmark, everywhere been here, right? And he says, now you get that boat ready and put sleeping bags in there and make a bed and breakfast out of it. <laughs> Rally can be important to a lot of people. Like I see millions and millions of dollars of business sailing past Rally every day between yachts, sailboats, cruise ships. Like we need to get some infrastructure here, that's for sure. Like we need a new wharf. And I, I think some of that millions of dollars that's sailing by us may come in. Now, uh, kids have very little to do. Over the next two years, uh, we'll lose another 18 students from our school, with maybe one or two coming in. So we, I'll say within another five years from here, I don't know if we'll even have school there. I'm in grade... Going in grade seven. And I'm going in grade three. I want to be Two things on the line, veterinarian and uh, uh, marine biologist, just to study all the fish and all stuff like that under the water, because I love it so much, like, it's all the interesting things that you can find, and, like, I just like to see, uh, like, find some new fish or something at the bottom, in the deepest places of the sea that people can't reach right now. Well, I think I might go away to live school then maybe go off somewhere big where you get a lot of work always working well i think after that i think i'll come back to this town because i like it a lot it's a nice place to live just come back and tell her My favorite things to go rally are uh, swimming. I love to swim because this ocean is 